Hello everyone, my name is Sam Kumar and welcome to my channel. So in this video, we are going to learn about Amazon Redshift Serverless. So I already have created the Redshift cluster and we have already loaded the data using copy command and using lambda function as well. So we know what is the Redshift is and uh, how we are using it. But this time we will going to use Redshift serverless instead of cluster so what is Redshift serverless is and what the meaning of serverless is so serverless doesn't mean that there is no cluster in backend and there is no server it is not possible right because server could be there to manage load the data and all everything so server is required but serverless means we don't care about the server this is the serverless for us so we don't have to manage the server and uh, Nowadays, serverless architecture is preferred. Means if you are doing working on data engineer engineering project or any other project, so we we don't want to manage the server because managing server cluster all those things is a hard job and we don't want to uh, go inside those detail. So just uh, AWS is coming up with everything every feature with uh, all the services with the serverless like lambda lambda is serverless. Uh, Redshift serverless, EMR is serverless. So, so today we are going to learn how you can create the serverless. So, what is the benefit of serverless? So, so you know what is the benefit. Benefit means you don't have to manage the server, and managing server is little, little hectic, hectic task. Okay. So you can see that Amazon Redshift serverless make it easy to run analytics workload of any site without having to manage data warehouse infrastructure. So you don't have to manage the infrastructure. Developer, data scientist, or any analyst can work across data databases, data warehouse, and data lake to build report and dash boarding application, perform real time analytics. So you can do whatever things you want to do, and you don't have to manage server or you don't have to manage the data warehouse infrastructure. Okay, that is the key word here. So you don't have to manage infrastructure. Okay, so get insights from data in seconds without having to manage data warehouse. So let's create how you can create the, the latest server and learn it. So this is my AWS account. You can uh, just search for Redshift. Let me search again. Search for Amazon Redshift here. Okay. So you can first time you log in here, you will see they're giving $300 uh, for using this Redshift server list. So let me try for Redshift Serverless, free trial. Okay, click it here. So I'll create Redshift Serverless and I will connect it using DB Viewer. You can use any other client and even though, even you can use Redshift inbuilt query ID as well, I will show you. So here we'll use the default setting. In the default setting, target namespace will be default namespace. Okay, let it be default name is only a database name will be dev. Okay, and uh, it is it is saying that it will create one. It is required manage associate IAM role. I mean, let's suppose that IAM role means you have created one recipe cluster, recipe uh, serverless. We are going to create a serverless, and that recipe serverless you want to communicate with S3. So you have to create one IAM role, IAM service role for recipe. That should have the access to that should have policy to access S3. Okay, so this and all thing will create right now. Just uh, I I already shown you how you can how to create this role. Okay, you can click here and edit. Okay, let it be. And uh, yeah, this capacity base capacity is 128. Okay, let it be. Whatever the configuration is there, let it be. And this is creating one using this default security group, default VPC, and default security group. And in this default security group, we are having this subnet. Okay, let me show you up what is the VPC. This is the VPC. Okay, if you see, this is the VPC having one route table. Okay, and this route table, if you click it, see this is the route table, and in this route table. 
take this out table you don't have to do all those things you can see i have removed this in uh, igw means uh, igw means internet gateway i have removed it so this become all the sub all the uh, subnet become private subnet because it was required in my previous project so i have removed but so let me add it otherwise it will not work so for you you don't have to do all those things because in by default in default vpc you will get the igw so let me add the internet gateway here okay this is my internet gateway i'll just add it so internet gateway will allow your subnet means private subnet to become public subnet and it will talk to the internet okay so this is the gateway between your uh, cluster and uh, outside the world okay so this is required so that's what i have added here so let, let me come to recipe to here so you don't have to add because in default vpc you will get by default you will get uh, that uh, route and then the, then in that route you will get your uh, igw attached so all the subnet is public subnet now so public and private subnet the thing is that like whenever you are you have added this uh, uh, igw to subnet so it will become public and if you remove the igw it will become private so private will not have access to the outside uh, outside means outside the vpc you cannot uh, access it okay so this subnet will call talk to this subnet this subnet will talk to this subnet internally in the vpc but no one can access it outside of the vpc so this is vpc this is called private private subnet so that is the different topic we will discuss uh, all those things but sometime if you are working on your uh, office laptop you check it what vpc you are using here and in that vpc whether the subnet is private or, or public and uh, or not so all those things you need to check it properly that's what i want to explain it okay leave it and just save the configuration okay it will take few minute to which is saying that it may take few minutes to complete because internally it is creating the servers that will uh, be managed by aws so it inter internally it is uh, creating so it will take some time meanwhile i will show you where you can go and uh, learn about uh, other things like creating role for recipe and all so i already have video for that if you come to this is this is my youtube means uh, playlist here there is a atlas playlist and if you come here you can if you want you can join it here by clicking this join button okay you can thank me also uh want you can thank me otherwise no not required okay see i have already created this recipe cluster okay this is the first video i have created this recipe cluster but this time i am creating a serverless and uh, here here i have told you how to create the im role and all and there is one video to copy file see copy file from s3 to recipe using copy command so this is this is all things everything is there but i just want to create a small video on serverless because people are moving out from cluster to serverless that's why it's very easy the thing is that all things will be same like cluster but uh, you don't have to manage the cluster here it will be a little bit easy okay so you can go to all this my video okay it's good to uh, watch here and uh, what why and my next video is going to be uh, i will connect emr serverless with the recipe serverless and we'll do some processing of the data that data will be there in our recipe and we'll process it using emr using file spark that is also serverless emr serverless we will going to use so keep uh, watching and that's all so let's see what happened here okay so this is completed okay continue that's all okay so this is created now i have to create a username and password correct so you can go to the name space okay because i have not created username and password correct and see this is also query data this is very good id that is um, given by aws and uh, you can query query data means this query data i will show you let me just create the password so let me give admin username as admin 
admin and password i'll keep a w s at the rate okay so just saying that and problem must be six character must contain this okay so you don't have to put this uh, at the rate and all okay Usually we, we keep uh, at the end password, but here you don't have to keep. So let me okay. Just save it. No thanks. Okay, we have created. So let just query data from here as well. We I will show you what is this. This is a very good uh, query tool. This is RESTful query editor. Okay, and you can click. You can uh, create it here. Can just uh, go to this is my previously I have created this one so this created saved in caching so that don't worry about this if one first time scroll open you will not get anything okay this is not connected anywhere if you click open it here it will say that database could not list it okay so just go here and edit connection and uh, uh, there is other method also just click here and connect then you will find connect connect otherwise you see here create database table schema also is there here you just see dot uh, connection detail or for you if uh, it will be the edit connection or connection come here click here database username password dev admin and i have kept password as aws Save it. No thanks. See, it is connected, right? So, if you click it plus sign, you will get the editor. So, we we'll get the editor here. Okay. And I want to create one table here. This is right now no table. So, let me create one table. Create table sales. Just I'm putting ID as uh, int okay and uh, uh, product product name product name is that guy okay i'm giving just 10 characters fine whatever things you can define you can define it here run it so it will create table if you refresh it right click and refresh we we'll get one table called sales. Now I want to insert some data here. Insert into table sales and what will you want to insert? Values and put one and book. Okay. Just insert one data. That's all. Now let me select it. Select from sales okay you get the result see this is also very good means uh, but uh, nowadays uh, people are means industry company where are working they'll provide you this uh, query data as well but sometimes they will not provide because uh, there will there will be some uh, what you called admin constant like if you they will be they will get approval and if they will allow because this is newly created and this is growing this is changing so people is not habituated to work on this so but in my company or any other company they're already providing this uh, console but some sometimes people don't want to work on this console they work on connector called db viewer or uh, some other uh, client so let me just uh, connect using this using the viewer. So what I will do. So to connect it to the viewer from here, it is outside, right? So you, we can go to your uh, configuration here. It will configuration. Okay. Close it. Close it. Close. 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 close, close. close. Okay. Why this is there is no that would refresh it. Oh, this got outside. Okay, leave it. Okay, need to reload again. Okay, let's log in.
okay let me go to my website I'll just walk you through to the console so i already created this this is default namespace default work group and if you go to the default work group you will see here all the connection detail here ddbc url odbc url security group okay now this is not publicly accessible so if it is not publicly accessible means you cannot access it outside the vpc you see allow instance and device outside the vpc to connect to the database okay so i'll for time being i'll make it publicly accessible okay but in the company uh, your you will you are going to use vpn and that vpn will be the part of this this subnet only this vpc only okay they will do connection vpn vpc connection and so if you you have to connect to the vpn and in the company this will be always off and this this is recommended to make it publicly not accessible because of the security reason you don't have to make it publicly accessible if you make it publicly accessible and if you if you lost your password or uh, credential the uh, hacker can to know then they will hack your database that's what this is not and in company they never it, it happen so they will in if you are working in some company so they will provide you vpn and you have to connect to the vpn it will be look like this uh, simple this is the vpn okay you can get the vpn the vpn will be part of the vpc so using vpn you are you will be part of this network and in this network this will be publicly off also this will work because this is same network because if you learn if you read it here allow instances and device outside the vpc to connect to your database okay but if you are in same network it is not required to make it on so but as of now i don't i am not you configured vpc and i want to connect to my this uh, db what that is there in my system okay my my local system my com computer so for that reason i will make it make it on and, and also i have to see my security group my ip address should be allowed okay so if you come to security group in inbound rule you can see all traffic all traffic for uh, should be allowed for this port okay so this is the reason this, this port is allowed here all that okay okay let me just remove other things not required okay might be i'm doing something so i'll just remove this thing it is in one rule and uh, remove it Remove it. This is this is for rest port. Okay, save it. And I'll go back and I'll make it public. Turn on public accessible. Save changes. Okay. Uh, refresh it. It will be modifying. It will take take some time to modify from public accessible off to on. So we'll wait for some time. Once available. So, how to connect? We'll just copy this JDBC. We'll open this uh, DB work. Click on connect option here. Search for Redshift driver here. Redshift. Okay. Then click on next. And in URL, you can put here your JDBC URL. And JDBC URL, you don't have to. Yeah, you can give like this and. Username and password. Username is um, I have kept. Username as admin and password is AWS. Okay, this one and test the connection. See, this is working fine. Okay, okay, and uh, just give the name. Otherwise, you will confuse the connection detail and give the name as. AWS uh, Redshift Serverless. Any name you can give. Just remember, finish. Okay. Now, okay. These are all things I have 
starting from fourth grade leave it so you now click here you will get the same things on the database whatever you are getting in your aws query editor same thing you get so now i want to okay close it close this all things not about otherwise let me open one more query editor don't save cancel open query editor from here okay open new query editor new open and uh, select because i have two Received uh, serverless and Postgre as well. So I'll select my database. And database selected. Now do select start from cell. Correct. Run it. So now you can able to see these things. So that's all for this video. So in this video, we have learned how to launch AWS server, AWS Recipe serverless and how you can connect it using uh, inbuilt query editor given by AWS and how you can connect this using DB Weaver. Okay. So hope you will not get any issue while doing this uh, lab. If you are getting any issue, please comment it and reach to me. I will definitely help you. Thank you very much.